So here's the first problem. It says a shake, and I put it in quotes because we're making up our own little term, a shake is a unit of time equal to 10 to the minus eight seconds. Are the number of shakes in a second greater than the number of seconds in a year? So that's part A, right? And that's, that's kind of like a separate question. Part B says, humans have been around for approximately 10 to the six years, while the age of the universe is approximately 10 to the 10 years. If we represent the age of the universe as one day, how many seconds have humans existed? You can see that these are two totally different types of problems. Really, they should be two different problems. Both involve time, so we'll just kind of keep it together and solve part A. So a shake is a unit of time equal to 10 to the minus eight seconds. Are the number of shakes in a second greater than the number of seconds in a year? They actually tell you what units they want right here. They want shakes per second and they want seconds per year. So all we have to do is calculate the number of shakes uh, per second and then calculate the number of seconds per year and see which one is bigger and just answer the question. So it tells us right here that a shake is a unit of time equal to 10 to the minus eight seconds and we want shakes per second. So all you have to do is say that one shake is equal to, and that means we can uh, put it into uh, a division with, or in ratio with, 10 to the minus eight seconds. You can think of this as a unit conversion, but nothing is canceling, so it's like shakes per second. One shake is equal to 10 to the minus eight seconds. This is a unit conversion equality of two different units, and so we can put them like this and we can divide them, but nothing cancels, so what you really get is you get uh, when you take one and divide it by 10 to the minus eight, you get 10 to the power of positive eight, and the unit is what we have left here, shakes per second. All right, so 10 to the eight shakes per second. Now we're trying to compare this to the number of seconds per year. So we know uh, that we have 365 days in a year, 365 days in one year. Now we wanna convert this and see how many seconds are there, right? So we know we have years there. So uh, in a day, how many uh, hours are there? So in one day, we have to put that on the bottom and cancel, we have 24 hours. And then this cancels with this, right? Now in one hour, how many seconds are there? Now first let me say, I could go one hour to 60 minutes and then one minute to 60 seconds. But you do this so much that actually I just remember that there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. And the reason there's 3,600 seconds is because there's 60 minutes and then there's in every minute 60 seconds. So 60 times 60 is 3,600, 3,600. So I just remember this one. But if you don't, just go one hour to 60 minutes and then one minute to 60 seconds. You're gonna get the same thing. So what we get here is these hours canceling these hours. So when you take 365 and you multiply it by 24, and these are all one, so multiply here, and then multiply by 3,600, you get 3.154 times 10 to the power of seven. And what are the units? Seconds per year, right? So this is seconds per year. And so the question said, are the number of shakes in a second greater than the number of seconds in a year? Are the number of shakes per second greater than the number of seconds in a year? This is, of course, 10 to the eight. This is a uh, uh, three, but it's times 10 to the seven. So this is the smaller number. This is the bigger number. The question says, are the number of sh uh, shakes in the second greater than the number of seconds in a year? The answer is yes. And so this one is larger than this one. This is what the question was basically asking. Now, when you read this thing, it sounds like it's like a completely nonsensical thing, but then when you do it, you see it, there's not much to it. You just have to get these two units, and you get this unit, and, you, and you're basically getting the units exactly what they asked you to, to have, and then you compare them, and then you answer the question. Just like everything else in life, once you know how to do it, it doesn't seem very hard, right? All right, so then problem number two, it says humans have been around for, or part B, I should say, humans have been around for about 10 to the power of six years, while the age of the universe has, has been around approximately 10 to the power of 10 years. If we represent the age of the universe as a day, how many seconds have humans existed? So again, if you try to look at this and say, map out a path to the answer and have all the steps in your head, then it's very confusing because you have uh, 10 to the six years, 10 to the 10 years, then it says if we represent the age of the universe as a day, how many seconds have humans existed? This is a ratio and proportion problem. It's like, you know, 
if the number of, of the time that humans have existed is the same thing as a day, then, uh, or the, if, the, if we represent the age of the universe as a day, then how long has, has humanity existed on, on that similar time scale? So that is a ratio and proportion. So we have to write down uh, what it means here. So what we have basically said is that 10 to the power of six years, because this is the age that the uh, humans have been around, right? Uh, compared to 10 to the power of 10 years, this, this is the amount of time the universe has been around. So this is the, the age of humanity uh, in relation to or in ratio with the age of the universe. This is a ratio. And we're gonna put it in terms of, these are big numbers, we're gonna put it in terms of a new ratio where we're gonna calculate X days and we're going to say that uh, the universe is equal to one day. Now let's read the problem and see if we've translated it correctly. Okay, humans have been around for 10 to the six years. The age of the universe is 10 to the 10 years. If we represent the age of the universe as one day, then how long has humanity existed? Now the only wrinkle is, because we put this in terms of days, then of course the age of the, the equivalent humanity is, is gonna be in terms of days. But it actually says we want the age in seconds. So all we're gonna do is calculate the age, we're gonna get days, how many days of human existence, then we'll just convert days to seconds because we can do that, that those are just time equivalents. So since you have a number one there and you multiply by one to move it over here to solve, then all you really have to do is say that X is gonna equal to 10 to the power of six over 10 to the power of 10. And so X is gonna be equal to, when you take 10 to the power of six and divide by 10 to the power of 10, you get 10 to the minus four days. So a very small fraction of a day. Uh, of course, I put x here. Sorry about that. It's 10 to the power of four, negative four days. So now the problem says how many seconds have human existed? We know how many days now. We'll take 10 to the minus four. This is days. And we're going to convert that into seconds. Now, you may just have it memorized, and that's fine. But what I do is I always say, all right, then one day is 24 hours. And the days cancel, right? And then I know that one hour. I just remember that it's 3,600 seconds because one hour and 60 minutes and then one minute and 60 seconds and six times six is 36 and so it's 3600 there. The hours cancel right here. So then what you get is when you take 10 to the minus four and multiply by 24 and then multiply by 3600, the ones don't do anything here, you get 8.64 and the unit is now seconds. 8.64 seconds. So on this time scale, when you have the, the age of all humanity and the age of the entire universe, and if the age of the entire universe is equal to one day on the calendar, then humanity has only existed on that ratio for a very tiny sliver of that, which is just a couple of seconds, eight seconds. That's all that is. So it's a straight ratio and proportion problem. All right, let's take a look at our last problem. It says the average distance to the sun is called an astronomical unit, and it's about equivalent or it's equivalent to about 1.500 times 10 to the eighth kilometers. That's called an astronomical unit AU. The speed of light is approximately 3.0 times 10 to the eight meters per second. Convert the units for the speed of light into astronomical units per minute. This is a straight unit conversion problem. We're given the speed of light in meters per second. All they're asking you to do is convert it to astronomical units per minute. So we just have to set up the dimensional analysis. We don't have to think about multiply divide. We just set it up to cancel and we're gonna get the correct answer. So we're told that the speed of light is three times 10 to the eight. You should probably re remember that. We're gonna be getting into this a lot more, but it's 3.00 uh, times 10 to the power of eight. That's meters on top and seconds on the bottom. Very big number. They call it the universal speed limit. We're gonna talk a lot about the speed of light later. All right. Um, so how do we convert this to astronomical units per, we want AU per minute. Now you can convert either one of these in whatever order you want, but you have to change both of them into these units over here. All right, so let's work on the meters first. Now in terms of what the problem has told us, we were told uh, that an AU is in terms of 1.5 times 10 to the eight kilometers, but we don't have kilometers, we have meters. So we have to first go to kilometers, right? And we know that 1,000 of these meters is one kilometer and these cancel. And now we have the length part of the situation in terms of kilometers. And we're told in the problem statement that one astronomical unit 
is 1.500 times 10 to the eight kilometers. And let me rewrite this eight a little bit clearer. That's an eight right there. And then we have kilometers canceled with kilometers. So if we stop the calculation here, then the unit of length has turned into AU. So we have AU per second. That's the speed of light in terms of AU per second, but we don't want that. We want AU per minute. So how do we go from seconds to minutes? We know that 60 seconds is equal to one minute and the seconds on the top cancels the seconds on the bottom. The only unit we have left is AU per minute. And so what we do is we take the 3.00 times 10 to the eight, we divide by a thousand, we divide by 1.5 times 10 to the eight, and then after that we multiply by 60 and we get 0 0.120 AU per minute. Astronomical units per minute. So this should be a capital U. AU is capital A and capital U per minute. All right, so what it's basically telling you is an AU is roughly the distance from the Earth to the Sun. This is about 0.1 AU. So the speed of light is about 10%, a little bit more than 10% of the distance from the Earth to the Sun per minute. That's basically what it, what it is, 10% of the distance it travels to the Sun every single minute. Something like that, close to that. So you can see that we never had to think about or guess. We never had to say, oh, do I multiply or divide by that? You don't have to do that. Just don't, don't torture yourself with that. Write the units down. Let the units dictate. Where are you trying to go? Write it down and cancel as appropriate in order to get where you're trying to go. You can solve some pretty complex problems just by dealing with units and just by knowing what the units are and where you need to go. You can solve a lot of problems that way. We're gonna lean on units a lot. So I'd like you to solve these. We've conquered uh, dealing with units of time. When you understand this, follow me on to the next lesson. We're gonna deal with units of mass and also units of density. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.